Good evening. Welcome to Sunset for the Zoo, bringing the mission home. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Calvin Ford, and along with my wife, Sarah, I'm honored to serve as this year's event chair. As many of you know, Sunset at the Zoo is the Detroit Zoological Society's largest annual fundraiser and one of Metro Detroit's favorite events of the summer. I know that my wife, Sarah, and I look forward to it every year. As with most things, Sunset looks a little bit different this year, but we didn't want to miss the opportunity to come together to support the zoo and its mission of celebrating and saving wildlife. Today, the zoo means a lot to me, but more than anything as a father, it's being able to see the zoo through the eyes of my children, which is a wonderful experience and something that I'm really grateful for. And to our community, I think the zoo is so much more important today than perhaps it's ever been. It represents normalcy, which during a pandemic can perhaps be the best thing it could possibly represent. Right now, more than ever, the zoo needs our help, which is why I'm so glad you've joined us this evening. From zookeeper interviews to behind the scenes footage, I know you'll enjoy this inside look at the incredible work of the Detroit Zoo. Before I hand things over to the zoo's executive director and CEO, Ron Kagan, I'd like to raise my glass to Ron and the entire zoo staff and to everyone who has reached out to support them during these unprecedented times. Cheers, Ron. And I hope you all enjoy Sunset for the Zoo, bringing the mission home. Good evening, and thank you, Calvin. We are so grateful for your commitment to Sunset and to the zoo. Ever since your great-great-grandfather, Henry Ford, helped to create the Detroit Zoological Society, your family has supported our mission and helped the zoo to flourish. And thanks to all of you for joining us this evening. We're very excited about the program we've prepared for you. We would especially like to thank Strategic Staffing Solutions, our presenting sponsor for this evening. We're so appreciative of their extremely generous annual support. I wish we could be together dancing, well, maybe not, enjoying local food and cocktails and taking in the zoo's expansive animal habitats at sunset. But this year had other plans for us. Like many organizations, we've suffered severe financial stress due to COVID-19. While our operating revenues are greatly diminished, our care for the animals and educational outreach has never stopped. Even though we are open once again to members and guests, many challenges remain. Attendance limits and the inability to host events have seriously impacted our finances. Your support this evening, whether it's an outright donation or an auction bid, will help ensure that the mission of the Detroit Zoological Society goes on. Although we aren't able to gather in a traditional sense, we're grateful for the chance to bring the zoo to you and highlight the important work that is happening here each day. So let's get to it. Everyone, please raise your glass and let's toast to the sponsors, donors, volunteers, members, guests, and staff who make the zoo such a special place. Cheers. Now, please enjoy this up-close look at one of the zoo's newest and cutest residents. Long days and sleepless nights. Like parents of a newborn human baby, our animal care staff had to hand rear a male chimpanzee day and night for five months before successfully transitioning his care to an adoptive chimpanzee mom. And all this during a pandemic. Chimpanzee Zane was born in early January at the Detroit Zoo. His mom, Chiana, fell ill soon after giving birth and required veterinary care. But when she recovered, she unfortunately showed no interest in looking after her son. That's when the primate care team stepped in to provide Zane 24-hour care. We carried him constantly, both day and night, as a mother chimp would, and we even taught him how to drink milk from a bottle. While the troop could not yet physically be with Zane, they grew to know him. Every day, the other chimps would see us caring for him, and they could smell him through the mesh screen. He was always near the other chimps, even though they couldn't be together physically. To prepare Zane for life with the other chimpanzees, we consulted with other zoos that have integrated human-raised infants into social groups. 
The carefully planned process began with observing potential surrogate moms in the Detroit Zoo's 11-member chimpanzee troupe, watching their responses to Zane. Mother and daughter, Trixie and Tanya, both females in the troupe, showed interest in him immediately. Trixie is a high-ranking matriarch in the group, and when we were thinking about who might be the best mother for Zane, she stood out. She was very interested in being near him whenever she could and seemed quite taken with him. From their first physical interaction, it was clear that five-month-old Zane had found his new adoptive family. A happy ending thanks to the incredible dedication of Zane's caregiving team. These days, you can see baby Zane living with a troop at the Detroit Zoo. You're so happy this new family is thriving together. Having the opportunity to have cared for Zane has been a rewarding experience. The dedication of the primate team was critical to Zane's survival. Now more than ever, your support is critical as well. To help the Detroit Zoological Society continue providing excellent care to animals like Zane, please make a generous gift today. Visit sunsetatthezoo.org or text SUNSET to 243-725. Thank you. Now, prepare to be amazed by the remarkable performers of the Detroit Circus. They'll be joining us throughout the evening, sharing their unique talents. Enjoy. Be sure to check out the Sunset for the Zoo online auction. There are many great packages to choose from, including Michigan getaways, beautiful art, and unique zoo experiences. Text the word sunset to 243-725 or visit sunsetatthezoo.org for more information and to start your bidding. The auction will close at 4 p.m. on Sunday, so don't miss out. At the Detroit Zoo, we believe that animals should live in spacious and naturalistic habitats that encourage their natural behaviors. Enjoy this tour of the Detroit Zoo's newest feature, the Devereaux Tiger Forest. Hi, I'm Scott Carter, Chief Life Sciences Officer for the Detroit Zoological Society, and we're here at the Devereaux Tiger Forest. At the Detroit Zoo, expansive naturalistic habitats are important because they allow animals to demonstrate their natural behaviors and to really thrive. This beautiful expanded habitat occupies an acre of the Detroit Zoo's Asian forest. It was designed to include important elements of the tiger's native landscape of Far Eastern Russia. You'll see open spaces, wooded areas, elevated vantage points for the tigers, multiple pools, a waterfall, and even a catnap cave. The two tigers living in the Devereaux Tiger Forest are Nikolai and Alexei. 
Normally tigers don't always live together in the wild, but these two boys are brothers and they get along really well. Amur tigers are considered endangered by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. As far as we know, there are only about 500 Amur tigers left living in the wild. There are things you can do to help protect tigers. Don't visit places that allow people to hold baby tigers and other animals for photos. Despite claims that this helps the conservation of wild tigers, holding baby animals in photos only exploits the animals and it significantly compromises their well-being. The rampant breeding of animals to produce cubs for these photo opportunities creates an endless cycle of abuse and suffering and it doesn't help protect wild tigers. All of us can also help tigers and many other animals in the decisions we make every day when we reduce and reuse instead of buying new and when we look for Rainforest Alliance certified products. Reducing the natural resources we use helps the environment for tigers and for us. We look forward to seeing you at the zoo, so come out and see the tigers and learn how we celebrate and save tigers and literally thousands of other animals. This is a tale of the zoo that could. There is many a creature inside our zoo's care. Giraffes and aardvarks and grizzly bears. But there is one special species that finds its way in, the ecologically vital school children. They arrive on buses and depart on wings, wondrous and adoring of all living things. Because the zoo sees the best way to protect the animals is to teach respect for the animals, nourishing all creatures, including the humans, honoring the world we all share. It's what you do if you're the Detroit Zoo that knew that it should, so we could. We all know how exciting it is to visit the zoo and to see beautiful animals like the tigers in their new home. Not too long ago, though, we weren't able to visit them in person. That's when some creative educators started bringing the zoo to you. There's nothing quite like a visit to the Detroit Zoo. For many, it's a place of tranquility, a peaceful spot to connect with nature and to learn about the world around us. So, when a pandemic put a stop to the experience, preventing guests from visiting the zoo, the Detroit Zoological Society team stepped in to bring the zoo to the community all by way of virtual vitamin Z. When the Detroit Zoo and the Belle Isle Nature Center closed in March due to a public health crisis, we knew that presented an opportunity to reach our audiences in new and different ways. Committed to helping the community during this difficult time, the education staff immediately transitioned in-person lessons into engaging virtual content. Now today, I would like for you to take a journey with me all around the world because the animal species that we're going to be focusing on can usually be found anywhere. Launching daily Facebook Live sessions from their living rooms, the creative education team delivered programming on topics ranging from the Partula snail to the Detroit Zoo's anaerobic digester. It's a tiny snail, this big! So this is an exact replica, replica of a Partula nodoso snail, and the Detroit Zoo was literally responsible for bringing them back from the brink of extinction. We wanted to do more to help our community, so we started providing programming multiple times a day, Monday through Friday. The staff even created a weekly news program to provide Detroit Zoological Society updates. Hi, and welcome to another dose of virtual vitamin Z. This is DZ TV for the week of August 10th, 2020. I'm your co-host, Stephen. And your other co-host, Claire. The virtual vitamin Z videos, which are also featured on YouTube and DetroitZoo.org, were just the beginning. During the shutdown, the education staff also built an online tool allowing teachers and families to search for lessons based on grade level and subject. From flamingos to wolves to native wildlife, there is a topic for everyone. Most lessons also include an activity that families can do together using supplies they already have at home. 
We really wanted to provide resources that were both engaging and informative, especially for parents who were supporting their children with distance learning. Even though the Detroit Sioux has reopened to visitors by reservation, the education team is still embracing this new digital pivot, taking their passion and knowledge and giving back to the local community and beyond. Thanks to the creativity and dedication of the education team, our community never lost access to the Detroit Zoological Society's unique and informative programming. Please make your best gift today to ensure these great education programs can continue. Visit sunsetatthezoo.org or text SUNSET to 243-725. Thank you. At the Bell Isle Nature Center in Detroit, the Detroit Zoological Society offers unique educational, environmental, and natural experiences that help people connect with nature and the wildlife that shares urban spaces with us. Inside the Nature Center and on the trails, marshes, and beaches on Bell Isle, we provide a diverse audience with informal learning opportunities and engaging programs that help people and urban wildlife thrive together. Our events and programs introduce nature and science to children at an early age and connect STEM curriculum with learning opportunities outside the classroom. We also offer ways for people to help animals, improve natural habitats, and collaborate in scientific research through citizen science programs like Adopt-A-Beach and Frog Watch. At the Bell Hall Nature Center, we are helping people interact with nature in a setting that is close to home and cherished by local families. This is a tale of a zoo that could. This zoo is so brave, it stands up to extinction. Reviving species living on the brink, birds and butterflies, Frogs and salamanders, without help, may be gone in a blink. So the zoo steps in, knowing right where to begin, turning abandoned eggs into abundant flocks, saving amphibians from a grim destiny, securing their rightful place in history. Because extinction, we think, should be extinct like thousands of others in need of a champion, looking and wondering who. The answer to who is our Detroit Zoo that knew that it should, so it could. Now I'm pleased to share an inside look at the National Amphibian Conservation Center and introduce you to its extraordinary director, Dr. Ruth. I'm Dr. Ruth Marset greaves and I'm the director of the National Amphibian Conservation Center here at the Detroit Zoo. I feel so fortunate to have this position as one of the only directors of an award-winning facility specifically dedicated to the conservation of amphibians. From a young age, I knew amphibians were my passion. They are the most fascinating creatures in the world to me, and I wanted to help save them. After veterinary school, I went on to get a PhD specifically in salamander reproduction, as reproduction is a very important part of conservation. The National Amphibian Conservation Center was the first of its kind when it opened 20 years ago, and it remains the largest facility in the world dedicated to the conservation of amphibians. The center is home to a spectacular diversity of frogs, toads, salamanders, newts, and Sicilians. There is award-winning work going on here that has helped bolster populations of endangered amphibians around the globe. One success story is with Wyoming toads. Since 2001, the DZS has bred and released more than 10,000 of these federally endangered toads into the wild. The Detroit Zoo is also part of the captive breeding program that may be the only hope for the Panamanian golden frog's survival. The beautiful and once locally revered golden frogs of Panama may be extinct in the wild as a result of deforestation, capture by people for the pet trade, and the amphibian chytrid fungus. We are also working on bolstering the population of the dusky gopher frog. Once abundant throughout Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, dusky gopher frogs are nearly extinct. 
This year marked the third time Detroit Zoo-born dusky gopher frogs were returned to the species' native habitat in Mississippi. To date, about 300 Detroit Zoo-born dusky gopher frogs have joined the wild population. Another success story in our work with amphibians centers around Tokyo salamanders. We are one of the only zoos in the world that has been able to breed this vulnerable species. With these new salamanders, we have hope that we can establish assurance colonies in zoos that can someday augment or replenish already declining wild populations. While these are just a few of our many efforts in amphibian conservation, community involvement is also very important. Our very own mayor of Amphibaville, Trinity Favaza, is a great ambassador of this effort, helping spread the word of the importance of amphibians and the ways people can help. The easiest thing to do for your local amphibian population is to not overly manicure your yard. Put some rocks out, don't clean up your leaves, and give them some places to hide. Amphibians play a critical role in the environment. Here at the Detroit Zoo, we are passionate about giving these beautiful creatures a future for their sake and for the sake of the planet. Strategic Staffing Solutions is pleased to be a longtime supporter of the Detroit Zoo and many of its annual events. Founded in Detroit in 1990, S3 has served as customers, consultants, and communities for 30 years with many more to come. We are proud to create jobs, raise the bar high for what a company should do, support our communities, and provide people with the opportunity to change their station in life. To learn more, visit strategicstaff.com. The Detroit Zoological Society is committed to conservation projects all over the world. Let's take a look at our penguin conservation efforts in Antarctica with zookeeper Flo Yates. Hi, my name is Flo Yates and I'm a zookeeper for the Detroit Zoological Society. I recently returned from a six-week expedition to Antarctica conducting scientific research on how the changing climate is affecting populations of penguins and other seabirds. The Detroit Zoological Society is a partner of the Polar Oceans Research Group, which has been conducting an ongoing ecological research project for more than 40 years at the U.S. Palmer Station. Scientific findings indicate that the climate is severely warming, which is affecting all aspects of the global environment, but particularly in Antarctica. The amount of sea ice in this polar region is declining year after year, and as a result, populations of many species of wildlife that depend on it, from algae to krill to penguins and other seabirds, are suffering. During my time in Antarctica, we studied every species of seabird surrounding Palmer Station including populations of Adelie, Chinstrap, and Gen 2 penguins, as well as giant petrels, brown and south polar skuas, and kelp gulls. We conducted a breeding chronology study, which involved the daily monitoring of penguin nests, from the time that the birds lay their eggs, to the chicks hatching, and ultimately fledging. We assessed the birds' body condition, recorded egg morphometric data, and took measurements and weights of birds and eggs. We also counted the number of individual birds in colonies of Adelie, Chinstrap, and Gentoo penguins on various islands. One of these islands was home to more than 6,000 Gentoo penguins. The DZS has worked with the Polar Oceans Research Group for a number of years. Its founder, the world-renowned polar ecologist and penguin expert, Dr. Bill Frazier, was a consultant on the design of the Detroit Zoo's award-winning Polk Penguin Conservation Center. This is the second time a member of our animal care team has been invited to be a part of this rare and extraordinary opportunity to conduct scientific research in Antarctica.
For many years, the Detroit Zoological Society has partnered with the Gorilla Rehabilitation and Conservation Education Center in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We hope you'll enjoy learning about this unique international partnership. One of the Detroit Zoological Society's many international conservation efforts is with the Gorilla Rehabilitation and Conservation Education Center, also known as GRACE. Located in the Democratic Republic of Congo, GRACE provides a home and much needed care for orphaned growers gorillas that have been rescued by wildlife authorities. The gorillas at GRACE have come into human care because their parents were killed by poachers. Ranging in age from three to 14 years, these animals wouldn't be able to survive on their own. The dedicated Congolese staff provides for all of their needs to return them to good health with the hope of eventually releasing them back into the wild. The gorillas at Grace currently live in a 24-acre forest enclosure, the largest gorilla enclosure in the world. One of the Detroit Zoological Society's roles is to help with veterinary care. We help with thorough wellness exams, which includes doing a complete blood count and blood chemistry tests, which aid in the diagnosis of disease and provide important information about the function of the kidneys and other organs. X-rays of animals that had suffered injuries in the past, dental x-rays, which is something that had never been performed before, and we clean their teeth to make sure that they stay healthy. Grower's gorillas are critically endangered with only 5,000 left in the wild. It's very important that we take care of every last Grower's gorilla that we can. The Detroit Zoological Society and the Holtzman Wildlife Foundation supported construction of the night house where the gorillas spent their evenings and the road that people use to deliver supplies to Grace. We helped to develop education programs for kids and adults in nearby communities, including integration of humane messages for the primary and secondary school groups that they work with both on site and in local villages. The staff engages with people of all ages helping to foster behavioral changes that result in a positive impact for the people, animals, and their shared home. Our CEO, Ron Kagan, is on the board of GRACE and a past chair. We were recently honored, along with eight of our other partners, with the International Conservation Award from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums for our work with GRACE. This partnership is among the most exciting and promising conservation, welfare, and education initiatives in which the Detroit Zoological Society is involved. We look forward to continuing this unique partnership with GRACE and to dedicating our efforts towards ensuring the safety of Grower's gorillas for generations to come. On behalf of the DTE Foundation, welcome to Sunset at the Zoo. As many of you know, the DTE Foundation has a long-standing relationship with the zoo. We understand the importance of cultural institutions like the Detroit Zoo and the role they play in uplifting our communities and our state. And we fully support the zoo's mission of celebrating and saving wildlife. We know you do too. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the event. This is a tale of the zoo that could. This zoo is so clever. It uses waste to conserve. How does one do that, you may suppose? It's all very amazing with a biodigester that extracts electricity from the less fragrant end of rhinos. And why stop there? When there's power in the air, no cleaner gift can be found, turning giant spinning towers into renewable power. A win-win. And plastic bottles, you see, are no good for the sea, or the shores, or the land that they fill. So this zoo took a stand and said, not on our land, and the humans and wildlife were thrilled. Thinking globally, acting endlessly, our Detroit Zoo that knew that it should, so it could. As a parent, I often think about how our actions affect the world and the future we are creating for our children. The Detroit Zoo takes steps every day to minimize its environmental impact and create positive change in our community and for the planet. Here's how. All life is connected, and that's why the team at the Detroit Zoological Society works hard to be a steward of the environment. 
As environmental degradation is a critical threat to wildlife and wild places, we take a stand, laying out a plan to do better. We want to help preserve the natural world for future generations of humans and other animals. That's why we take the action in sustainability. The North Star for the Detroit Zoological Society is its green print, a sustainability roadmap, and a journey that invites other organizations and individuals to lessen our collective environmental impact. It's an essential element of our mission and influences all of the organization's operations and programs. We use the green print to refine and improve our facilities, business practices, and educational initiatives to reduce our carbon footprint and increase the green literacy throughout our community. From eliminating the sale of bottled water and the use of plastic bags to building an anaerobic digester, the Detroit Zoological Society has a number of signature programs and initiatives in environmental sustainability. One cool feature is the Smart Flower, a ground-mounted solar panel system that generates clean electricity and powers the zoo's carousel and even some of Wildlights. An upcoming DTE Energy Solar Array at the Red Panda Picnic Site will generate clean electricity to power the Red Panda Building and beyond. We hold ourselves accountable as an organization and also as individuals to always look for ways to lessen our carbon footprint. We also have tips and resources for the community to lead a greener life. Year after year, environmental sustainability is gaining momentum and the Detroit Zoological Society's impact is spreading as the organization works to influence, inspire, and educate guests, members, and the community at large. The goal of the DZS is to create conservation-focused, environmentally-friendly facilities. We want to make sure that we heal and not harm the planet. We encourage others to take action into trying to protect the planet and its inhabitants. Future generations depend on the actions we take today to show your support for the Detroit Zoological Society and their pioneering work in sustainability. Please make a generous gift now. Visit sunsetatthezoo.org or text sunset to 243-725. Thank you. For another behind the scenes perspective, we joined Dr. Grace Fuller to talk about how we measure the health and welfare of animals who live at the Detroit Zoo. A simple way to think about animal welfare is that it's the quality of life that an animal has from their perspective. And that last part is really, really critical. It's all about the animal's perspective. So we can provide the greatest habitat and the greatest care for an animal, but ultimately their welfare is gonna be how they experience that care and that habitat. So because animals can't tell us directly how they're doing, we have to think of creative ways to understand how they're doing. So we look at their behavior, we look at hormone levels, we look at their physical condition. None of these things alone can tell us that an animal has great welfare, but when we think about them holistically, we can start to get an understanding of how they're experiencing the world that we created for them. This lab gives us an additional measure of animal welfare. We're able to use innovative and non-invasive means to further our holistic approach to understanding how animals are faring. We're currently analyzing hormones in samples extracted from molted penguin feathers, from giraffe saliva, and from rhino, grizzly bear, and aardvark fecal samples. By using physiological data in conjunction with behavioral observations, we're able to further the science and create best practices that ensure that animals are thriving in the care of humans. Be sure to check out the Sunset for the Zoo online auction. There are many great packages to choose from, including Michigan getaways, beautiful art, and unique zoo experiences. Text the word sunset to 243-725 or visit sunsetatthezoo.org for more information and to start your bidding. The auction will close at 4 p.m. on Sunday, so don't miss out.
This is a tale of a zoo that could. This zoo is a haven. On principles it stands. A champion for creatures in and outside its care. Bettering environments through science. Sharing its knowledge and guidance. Breaking ground in animal welfare. Saving lions from junkyards. Countless others who have needed its aid. Polar bears from the circus. Neglected, abused. A sanctuary for all it has made. At the side of all creatures, in need of a home. Left wondering who. The answer to who is our Detroit Zoo. That knew that it should, so we could. Now I'm excited to introduce you to a very special member of the Detroit Zoological Society's education team. David Gakure was born in Kenya, and he loves to share his passion for Africa, its people, and wildlife with guests at the Detroit Zoo. He shares fascinating tales of his life and experiences and is a gifted storyteller. Let's watch him at work. Jumbo, my name is David, education specialist for the Detroit Zoological Society. I am from Kenya, from the largest tribe, the Kikuyu. I bring my rural home, my rural village, my experiences to the zoo through the eyes of a tour guide from Kenya. And now I'm going to tell you a story about how zebras got their stripes. So a long time ago, all zebras looked alike just like the donkeys of today. They all looked, they all looked gray. And they all never seemed to know who they were. They never seemed to recognize who, who is who. Until one day, a giraffe towered across the plains and they all were astonished to see his beautiful pattern. As soon as they saw the giraffe, they walked up to him and asked, where did you get this pattern? And he said, you need to be who you are. You have to practice to be who you are. And they all looked at each other. As they debated, one by the name Moja stepped forward and he said, my name is Moja, and I, and I love, I love looking up into the clouds. I love watching clouds move. And his skin started peeling off, revealing the most beautiful color of black and white. And every other zebra stepped forward, talking of what they like and what they, uh, what they like and what they like doing. And once everyone was talking, was mentioning who they were, once they had discovered themselves who they were, the pattern on the, uh, the gray pattern started peeling off slowly, revealing that black and white. The giraffe, looking at the zebras, he smiled, having known that they had discovered who they were. And the pattern stuck. Since then, the zebras, have always had the uh, black and white color. Thank you. Now let's take a look at another story of determination and innovation during the pandemic. Meet the Great Lakes Piping Plover and the dedicated team working for their survival. If you're looking for some good news in 2020, here's some. The Detroit Zoological Society's successful efforts to help save endangered Great Lakes Piping Plovers. 
To date, 2020 has actually been our most successful year with our Piping Plovers Salvage Captive Rearing Program. Now that's where we hatch out and rear abandoned piping plover eggs. So the pandemic slowed us down, but it actually did not stop us from working together to help save these very special birds. Under normal circumstances, a Detroit Zoological Society-led team would have incubated abandoned piping plover eggs in a captive rearing facility in Pelston, Michigan. Instead, at the request of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the piping plovers made their way to the Detroit Zoo. There were some really harrowing rescue attempts too. For example, there were three eggs and a single hatchling left alone in the middle of an intense storm when their mother was killed by a coyote and their father had fled. Working with partners, we were able to go in and help. The tiny shorebirds make shallow nests in the summer on flat, open, sandy beaches in northern Michigan. The same beaches that attract people, their pets, and development. In the late 1980s, only 17 nesting pairs of Great Lakes piping plovers remained. The species was nearly wiped out by human disturbance and other factors. A federal recovery program was established shortly after, with the DZS creating a captive rearing program in 2001. So as scientists, we recognize that salvaging these abandoned eggs could really aid in the recovery of the Great Lakes piping plovers. So that's what we did, hatching and rearing these birds until they were able to join their wild counterparts. This year, we were able to hatch and rear 39 chicks, the most successful outcome in the program's nearly 20-year history. Wildlife conservation is a critical mission pillar of the Detroit Zoological Society's mission, so we were thrilled to be a part of the Piping Plover story. Since the launch of the salvage rearing program, 299 captive reared birds have been successfully released. Ready to fly at about a month in age, these birds, which would have otherwise perished, are now helping to bolster the small remaining population of wild Great Lakes piping plovers. So it's really a bittersweet moment. When we're hatching the eggs and rearing the baby plovers, we really get to know them as individuals. So it's exciting to watch them head out into the wild, knowing that they're contributing to the population of this incredible bird. This evening has been amazing. Thank you. I hope everyone at home has enjoyed Sunset for the Zoo as much as I have. I'm more inspired than ever to get involved and help the Detroit Zoological Society. Our zoo needs your support right now. Please visit sunsetatthezoo.org or text SUNSET to 243-725 to make a bid on some great auction items or make a gift that's as generous as possible. And don't forget, the online auction will be open until Sunday at 4 p.m. If you missed part of tonight's program or if you would like to share it with friends, a recording will be available on the zoo's website and Facebook beginning tonight. Please help spread the word about the great work that continues at the Detroit Zoo, even in these wild times. Thank you for being here and helping to support this important community resource. Good night, and back to you, Ron. Thank you very much, Calvin. This special evening wouldn't have been possible without you and Sarah, and so many wonderful partners. We would especially like to thank Strategic Staffing Solutions, DTE, and all of our other generous sponsors. Thank you also to the dedicated members of the Sunset Planning Committee, our friends at Donor, and the entire DZS staff whose work was showcased tonight. If you made a donation, thank you. Your support will help us to continue to provide great care for endangered animals at the Detroit Zoo. You'll also help to sustain our valuable education programs. Please help us bring schools and classes and students here as soon as possible. Your support also helps with our wildlife conservation efforts and our continued action for environmental sustainability. We can't wait to get together with all of you in 2021. In the meantime, stay well and please come visit your Detroit Zoo. Thank you and good night. <laughs>